Well, hey guys, happy August. You know what that means. Today's video, I'm gonna share with you my favorites from the month of July, as well as a few fails. I do these videos obviously monthly and I save them all in a playlist. So if you wanna see prior months, definitely check there. Before getting into the video though, make sure you are subscribed and you hit the bell notification that will let you know when my videos go live. Now, several months ago, I made a large purchase from ISDEN. I wanted to try out a lot of their products. I've already reviewed several of them here the Melatonic Serum, Melaclear Skin Brightening Serum, and their sunscreens with DNA repair enzymes. So check those videos out if you miss them. But one product from them that has been a complete fail for me has been their Hyaluronic Concentrate. This is a hyaluronic acid serum, if you will, lightweight consistency. Hyaluronic acid helps to pull water into the stratum and corneum. That improves moisture content. Ultimately, when the moisture content of the stratum and corneum is better, the skin is smoother, softer. Skin cells exfoliate more efficiently when there's good hydration, and it plumps everything up, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. This particular this particular product has hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid as well as sodium hyaluronate, the salt of hyaluronic acid. So a few forms. In addition to that, it also has pseudo altermonis ferment. It's thought to be helpful for moisture retention, hydration, as well as oiliness. In addition to that, this product has two peptides, palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7 and palmitoyl tripeptide 1. Both of those are what is in Matrixyl 3000, a proprietary ingredient uh, that is the those two peptides and one of the peptides is like a fragment of collagen the other peptide is like a messenger peptide and these two work together or are thought to work together to help stimulate healing repair and perhaps collagen synthesis however at the end of the day peptides and skincare products similar to hyaluronic acid they can help with moisture retention ultimately smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines albeit temporarily now this does have fragrance which you all know I prefer to not have fragrance in my skincare products um, but I was willing to give it a try anyway and I have to say the fragrance is very strong and it lingers it lingers quite a bit it's not a bad scent whatsoever but it's something that you might like to have in a refreshing cologne not something that you necessarily want on your face regardless I tried to ignore the fact that there was fragrance in this but this product for me when I put it on my face instant redness and I have tried it multiple different times, you know, by itself and or with the rest of my skincare routine, constant factor is the redness. Short-lived, but uncomfortable, and it was always a factor for me. So very irritating, could not tolerate it. That combined with the fact that the fragrance in this product does linger for a long time, I just, I can't tolerate it. Um, I think, you know, I've mentioned this in other videos, but hyaluronic acid, it can enhance penetration of other ingredients. And I did notice that this product has salicylic acid in it. Salicylic acid, wonderful. Uh, anti-inflammatory, helpful for hyperpigmentation, oiliness, pores, a variety of things, but it can be irritating and perhaps uh, this product, you know, enhances that, makes it more irritating. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but for me, this was just simply a no-go. Let me know though, I know a lot of you guys are, are fans of Isden. Many of you who live in Spain have commented that this is actually a very affordable brand in Spain. Second epic fail, you know, I had the opportunity this month to go to Las Vegas. I was invited to attend Cosmoprop. It was a fun time. Definitely check those vlogs out if you miss them. I had a great time, did a lot of stuff and you all went along with me. Anyways, um, I have this sample here from First Aid Beauty. I love samples for this reason. This is their cleansing oil plus makeup remover. I was like, woohoo, a little mini. Um, take it with me on my trip and try it out. This was horrible. When I say horrible, I am not exaggerating. This is probably one of the worst cleansing oil type products I've ever tried. Burned around the eyes tremendously and it did not take off my makeup. It left residue behind. I think it would be better off if you just took a regular cleanser and smeared it all over your face. This does not act, in my experience, using it as a cleansing oil. It's kind of the consistency, the experience of just using a facial cleanser, but it's very mild in the its cleansing action and it, it leaves behind residue, cosmetic residue. So this was a no-go for me. And I was really optimistic. You know, it's got glycerin, colloidal oat, I, I had high hopes for it. I really think First Aid Beauty has 
I don't know. I think they sold their company to someone else. Many of their products are simply just not as good anymore. I've heard that from you all. It's been my experience. And ever since my experience with that tinted sunscreen that was so grainy, I have just not been such a fan of First Aid Beauty. They've really, I don't know, they've really gone downhill. So let me know in the comments if that's been your experience as well. So those were the fails from the month of July. Now moving on to favorites. Okay, gotta love this bad boy. If you have a Trader Joe's in your area, definitely give this a try. It is their newer now daily facial sunscreen came out um, in the beginning of July, SPF 40. I finished it. Fragrance-free, clear, colorless, no cast. It goes on feeling greasy when you put it on. It has that slippery, silicone-y feel, but it actually dries down, and it's like as though you don't have anything on the skin. It's water-resistant, uh, up to 40 minutes, so it's perfect if you live somewhere humid, you're sweating a lot. The formula overall, is very silicone-y. It allows for good evaporation of sweat so you don't feel overheated. Uh, it's super lightweight, again, not greasy. You know, sometimes products like this, the silicone-iness, it still feels slippery. It never seems to quite dry down. With this, it actually does. It's comfortable to wear around the eyes, and I also found this was great to the lips. People call this like a dupe for the super goop unseen sunscreen. There are a lot of other similar sunscreens on the market. The Black Girl Make It Matte sunscreen is kind of similar to those two. Similar consistency, color, although a lot of you guys have commented that you find that one to be oilier, leave a more of a greasy residue on your skin. I didn't experience that with that one, but I will say this is not greasy at all. The other thing that I found with this that is fantastic is you can put it on the lips. It's not drying or irritating on the lips. Stays on well and is moisturizing, highly recommend it. Very inexpensive. Only issue with it is I wish they made it a bigger bottle because I finished it. And I finished it in about three and a half weeks or so. So not, you know, it didn't last me too, too long. So let me know if you, you managed to snag it, what your thoughts were on it. Speaking of sunscreens, I wish came in a bigger bottle. I also tried out this month and made my way through quite a bit of the Roto Mentholatum Sunplay Clear Water SPF 50 PA four plus i got this from stalvana but they are since sold out or at least as of the filming of this video i noticed that they're sold out of this particular sunscreen on there you can get it on amazon you also probably can get it from yes style anyways roto mentholatum japanese brand make fantastic products this particular sunscreen is fragrance free it's a hybrid sunscreen meaning it has mineral active ingredients and chemical active ingredients it has both zinc and titanium dioxide it also has juvenal a plus which is a really good filter for UVA. It covers UVA1 and UVA2. It's similar to avabenzone, but a lot more stable. Avabenzone is what we have here in the States to cover UVA1 and UVA2 in our chemical sunscreens. And it works well, but it's not stable. Companies have to do things to stabilize it. Juvenile A plus is like a better version of that. Unfortunately, it is not FDA approved here in the US, so you won't find it, but it's common in a lot of Asian sunscreens. And in addition to that, it also has octinoxate, which helps with UVB. So really good array of active ingredients for protecting you from those UV rays. It also has dipotassium glycerizate, uh, which comes from licorice, and that's anti-inflammatory, good for soothing redness, irritation. This product is water resistant, stays in place really well. Interestingly, it has a bluish tint to it. It's tinted blue. And I think that is to help kind of camouflage the yellow hue that this product otherwise likely would have. Uh, a lot of um, sunscreen active ingredients are kind of a yellowish color. And I think, you know, that can kind of sometimes contribute to a shiny, filmy look on the skin. And I do think that that blue color in this helps balance it out. Uh, very lightweight, non-greasy, and comfortable to wear around the eyes. If you see alcohol denaturant, don't automatically assume it's going to be drying. Alcohol denaturant can help stabilize the filters and allow for a more comfortable feel, overall consistency, fast absorbing, quick dry, non-greasy, um, and other ingredients overall in a product can help balance out any potential drying effects from a little bit of alcohol denaturant. So I wouldn't assume that. In my experience with this, it's actually very moisturizing. I'm wearing it currently. 
and yeah, highly recommend it. Okay, so I have really been into body slugging, basically using uh, petrolatum on my arms and legs primarily, and it has made a huge difference in the way the skin there looks for me. I deal with pigmented purpura. I have a whole video explaining what this is, but it's basically little showers of red and yellow brownish dots on the lower legs that are brought out by prolonged standing or heavy exercise. And uh, this, you know, using a moisturizer to legs consistently can kind of help minimize that, although it's not gonna take it away completely or, or anything. But I have found that the body slugging thing really helps out a lot in that department. Reduces just the overall severity and intensity of, of it when it happens. Now, this summer, I have discovered Eucerin's Intensive Repair Essential Oil Balm. This is like a hybrid between an oil and a cream. It's not quite as um, greasy as petrolatum, but if you want something lighter, but more intense than a cream as far as uh, that slip to the skin, give this a try. I've been using this as a body slug uh, moisturizer and it's really been great. Like I like to put this on after a shower and then wrap up in a robe, put the AC on, wrap up in a robe and it just really sinks into the skin, reduces water loss. The following day, skin's super soft. It doesn't leave any greasy residue. It has glycerin, which is a humectant that helps pull water into the stratum corneum. It has castor seed oil. Some people are allergic to that, but otherwise that's a good emollient. It has shea butter to reduce water loss. This is fantastic. Sunflower seed oil. The essential oil name in this, it's confusing. Like you think essential oils like lavender, eucalyptus, what? The, it's, it's more of like oils essential for skin. It's just a weird choice of, of words in my opinion. Anyways, no fragrance. This is really good. Really good for like the knees, the elbows. Really been enjoying this. I'm almost finished with it. Um, you can get this at Kroger or on Amazon. Eucerin does not make a bad product. They're seriously one of my favorite skincare brands. As a matter of fact, I think in last month's favorites, I had one of their sunscreens, which I finished up. So those are the skincare products. I didn't read anything this month. I watched a few movies here and there, but nothing that I even actually really remember. Yeah, this past month, I definitely slacked off on reading. I, I read nothing. So I don't have a book of the month to update you guys on. But something I'm, I've been so impressed with the quality is this little zipper bag tote slash uh, purse thing. This is by Land's End. This particular pattern is no longer available. First of all, I love that it's canvas because I don't buy leather um, and it's really hard to find shoes, bags, that are not leather, that are not like super cheap. Um, anyways, so really well made. It's Land's End, uh, really good quality stitching, fits a lot in here. And inside the bag, it's got a slot, slots for your credit cards. Um, it holds a lot. And you can put your phone in here. The stitching is really nice. Pretty thick material. Then you've got this, but it's perfect for travel because you'll often have a larger bag that you're taking and so you can just plop this in like a bag within a bag, easy to pull out, have like your ID that you can pull out to go through security or whatever. Um, your phone will go in here. It's just nice. Like I love bags like this that can serve as a standalone purse for when you go out in the evening, but also it's almost like a wallet with, that you could throw in a bigger bag. Very functional, easy to go through security. This particular pattern, like I said, is sold out on Amazon, but they have a few others. Highly recommend it. It was like under, I feel as though it was under $15 for this, which is a great deal because like I've said, the stitching is really good quality. You know, I'm always leery. Um, sometimes you buy bags on, buy stuff on Amazon, whether it's luggage or whatever. And you know, you can just tell when you get it, like it's not gonna last. This I believe will last a long time. Um, and it's a good brand, Land's End. The zipper doesn't get sticky opens and closes really easily. You can put your sunglasses in here. Love it. So that has definitely been a favorite. 
All right, and then last but not least, this is completely frivolous, but you guys know me, I'm like a child at heart. So I saw this and I had to have it. I love Kirby, this little character, and I saw this little character has an umbrella. So you'll notice he's in my backdrop and my videos late these days. Isn't he cute? He just kind of looks like he's seeking shade. I had to have him <laughs> and I wanted to put him in the favorites video because that you may notice him in the background of my videos. Isn't he cute? He's got his little umbrella. It almost looks like he's getting overheated. I don't know. I just thought he was an appropriate mascot for <laughs> summer 2022 since it's been so hot everywhere. Let me know in the comments if you guys are still in the throes of heat waves. Uh, stay cool for sure. Like I think here typically August is very hot. Um, and so stay cool. Definitely check out my video on tips to avoid heat exhaustion, heat stroke. I just thought he'd be a cute mascot in the background with his little pink cheeks. <laughs> he looks flushed. I need to be careful though because they have a variety of these and this is the kind of thing that I would get into collecting and I just don't need that <laughs> cluttering up space. But yeah, he's our little summer 2022 mascot, Kirby. This used to be like an intent, like a Game Boy game, wasn't it? Wasn't he like some floating blob that would like float around the Nintendo game? He is safe for children seven years of age and older. How bummed would you be if you were six though and you couldn't play with this? One other thing, let me know in the comments if you're into collecting stuff like this. Are you a bit neurotic when it comes to tags? Like, do you have post Beanie Baby tag neuroses? It's a condition where you're like so afraid to take off a tag because you were indoctrinated by Beanie Baby culture into thinking that if you remove the tag, then in the future, you would lose like the value of your prized possession. We were told back in the day when Beanie Babies were really popular that they were gonna be worth millions of dollars. But if you took the tag off, they would completely lose their value. And <laughs> like, <laughs> It was such a scam because you would go to these, they would have certain Beanie Babies that would come out and they were like limited edition, really hard to find. You would go all over trying to find them to like swap meets because people would buy them up, kind of like Ray Dunn. You know how people went berserk over Ray Dunn and would buy it all up from Home Goods and then sell it on eBay? Similar kind of thing with the Beanie Babies back then and you'd have to like go to like a swap meet or something to find a particular Beanie Baby. It was madness. And they made it seem like these Beanie Babies were gonna be like worth millions one day and they're not. I still have all my Beanie Babies and um, <laughs> like I loved them, but they also have the tags on them too. I also even went to McDonald's because McDonald's had Beanie Babies and the Happy Meals. See, McDonald's used to have really good toys. Probably why we're so hooked as a country on fast food is because of those toys. They had good toys in the Happy Meal back in the, back in the day. And for a while, they would have the Beanie Baby toys, little minis. So I had to have those because, you know, I was a Beanie Baby collector. Anyways, hopefully Kirby will not turn into the new Beanie Baby thing for me. Uh, Cause that, that definitely was something I got really hyper-focused on. <laughs> Finding those, those Beanie Babies for my collection. But anyways, he's our mascot for summer 2022. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's everything from the month of July. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you're having a great summer. I know some of you um, are teachers and or have children that are gonna be going back to school soon. So I hope you enjoy the last weeks of your summer or if you have still the entire month of August of summer vacation. Keep having fun and enjoying it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.